Hi Bartonella buddies! Do I look like I'm wearing a toga? <laughs> I'm here for an addendum to my Bartonella breakdown video. Unfortunately, after those three worst days of my illness, I had another three worst days of my illness. So we'll round up to a week of the worst week of my life. So I filmed that video on a Saturday and that was my good day. At the end of that video, you see me starting to belch and that was a foreshadowing of worse things to come. The next day, Sunday, I took my AM uh, steroid, I took my midday steroid, and about four hours into my midday steroid, so halfway through how long it was supposed to last, I started to belch again, and I was really freaked out. Also, at this time, because I had been on IM steroids for about a week, and then I was doing three IM injections a day, I was starting to look and feel like a pincushion. <laughs> Luckily, the physician's assistant was on call and she gave us really good advice and I was crying and freaking out. And she told us to do one more injection of the Medrol. And we did. And about 15 minutes later, my feet were on fire with burning nerve pain. And it finally clicked that, oh, the reason why I'm not lasting through that full steroid dose is because it is both suppressing my mast cells while simultaneously activating them. An hour into the Medrol dose, I didn't have any burping relief at all. We called the physician's assistant back. She was like, yeah, I wouldn't recommend do any more steroids. And I was like, okay, time to hit that Benadryl. <laughs> so I took a lot of Benadryl. Don't try this at home. I have been given permission by my doctors to take quite a fair bit of Benadryl. Um, at the dosage I was taking, I did hallucinate a bit. It brought me back to some very bad college highs. <laughs> But it did stop the belching. And so I was sitting in my mom's bed like this and I would close my eyes and I would start to hallucinate and the hallucinations were really scary. There was blood. And then I would open my eyes, make sure that it really was a hallucination, look around and then for about two hours. <laughs> I finally was able to go to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the restroom and I, I said go to the restroom. I always say to pee. I woke up to pee. <laughs> Who do I think I am? So I woke up to pee. I took another Benadryl. A couple hours later, I woke up with so much belching and pain. I was dying again. I took more Benadryl. It calmed back down. This was now Monday morning and we went into the doctor's office and we got permission to stop the Medrol cold turkey if that's what I thought was best. Over the next couple days, I barely slept, I barely ate, I barely drank water. I could not sleep for more than three hours at a time for those next few days or else I would wake up with excruciating pain because my Benadryl blood levels would dip too low. I lost about five pounds in as many days. I felt very weak, but by Wednesday, I started to feel better. Now it's Saturday and I am almost back to baseline. And I had been suspecting for a few days that the Medrol was kicking up my mast cells while simultaneously calming them down. And while that sounds sort of counterintuitive, I just had this feeling that it was harming and helping. And when we did that last Medrol shot and it didn't calm my stomach at all and it went straight to my feet with burning nerve pain, I was like, there, that's it. In this household, my mom and I are constantly spinning plates and we are constantly fine tuning um, my medication. Did I take not enough of this or too much of that? What's causing the reaction? Over the past year and a half, we've become very adept at figuring out what's going wrong and what's going right. I could not do it without her. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then on Wednesday, I'm starting to feel better and my mom wakes me up and she's like, I've been having weird poop since Friday. And in some mild COVID cases, some people only have GI symptoms. And after all that we had been through, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? 
My mom went and got a COVID test. We isolated uh, from each other in our house. My mom got Piper in the divorce. And what that meant was I needed to prepare every meal for myself and I still can only stand for 15 minutes total a day. So what that means is if I take an eight minute shower, now I only have seven minutes on my feet. And if it takes 30 seconds to walk from my bed downstairs to the microwave, well, now I only have six and a half minutes on my feet for that day. And if I exceed that 15 minute allotment, I have a lot of nerve pain in my feet. We knew the probability of her having COVID was super low because we've been super safe. We've barely gone out in a month, but we also couldn't think of a whole lot of illnesses that only give you diarrhea for five days. The next day, the test came back negative, but then I, knowing what I know now about testing, I'm like, okay, well, how much can I trust that test? And we asked her doctor what the false negative rate was, and even though she was super nice, she didn't really know. So we kept apart from the house for 24 more hours. My mom's diarrhea subsided and my sanity returned. <laughs> I needed that like a hole in the head. And so now I'm just waiting for my stomach to calm down and get 100% back to baseline um, before I try the next thing to fuck me up. And I wanna thank everyone that watched that previous video with me crying and all your kind words about that video meant a lot to me. And I'm glad that I, you know, shared that with you guys. My lip just got stuck on my tooth in a really weird way. It meant a lot that you guys were so nice. Please join our Facebook support group page called Breaking Down Bartonella if you haven't yet. And thanks for watching. Uh, that one tasted like cabbage. It's not afforded assorted fruit. Afforded fruit. <laughs> I fall assorted fruit. <laughs> <laughs>